It's summertime and the living's easy. We both went and saw the smash hit Deadpool and Wolverine. So let's talk about Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine spoiler edition. Oh. So I didn't know that if I dropped my phone on my keyboard, it would auto roll the uh, the credits mid sentence for you. <laughs> I was gonna, I was saying I was gonna say uh, all the spoilers, all the additions, and then you started. I was like, oh, Taylor wants to get to it. <laughs> Let's get to it. I yeah, I uh, my bad. <laughs> so I hit I hit the button. My Taylor. Bad. Oh yes, please, please put yeah, up the right yeah. off the bat. Everyone. Before you all get pissed at us for talking about everything that we want to talk about in this episode, spoiler alert. If you have not seen Deadpool and Wolverine, stop watching. We yeah. have another episode this week. Just 100%. Don't listen to this. Go see the movie right now. Go see it. And there we go. So, Deadpool and Wolverine. Tell me what you thought. Okay. I have. Okay. So, the first thing I want to know is how much of this movie did you know going into it? Most of it. Okay. Uh, as I sat, so, okay, as I sat in a packed movie house, I had to buy a random, my friend couldn't go with me, he's a new dad, his mother who came to take care of the baby got COVID, he's going through a lot. Mazel tov to you, my congratulations, but keep that baby COVID free. Uh, as I sat in the packed theater, the first thing I thought is, people don't have superhero fatigue, people have bad movie superhero fatigue. Yeah. And if they are excited, they are ready to come out in droves. Yeah. Um, the next thing I want to say is this movie, much like Spider Man No Way Home, was able to crest on this wave of past nostalgia and really cash in its chips in a way that felt authentic and fun and great. It did. Yes, there were. Uh, there Thirdly, I think everything we talked about at Comic Con is only relevant because of how excited people were to see Deadpool and Wolverine. And as they brought back these iconic character uh, actor, as they brought back uh, Hugh Jackman to come play Wolverine, which he said he wasn't going to do anymore, I think all of the conversation about what's going on with Marvel, with Robert Downey Jr., only matters because of how great Deadpool and Wolverine was. Yeah. Taylor, it was funny. It talked about how shitty the MCU is now. Uh, the line where he said, uh, welcome to the, uh, he's like, welcome to the MCU. You're joining at a high point. That was my favorite gag when he said that to Wolverine. Right? I was like, yes, he's self-aware. Uh, I firmly believe that Ryan Reynolds should be in charge of the humor going forward for the MCU because um, whoever's been in charge of it in the past, I don't know what they're doing. It's not funny. Who? Where? Or okay, okay. Well, okay, I don't even want to get into that yet. Okay, I won't because we haven't we haven't gotten too spoiler yet. Um, I was so the movie didn't the roller coaster ride didn't start too crazy. I feel like it. the opening fight scene was really fun. I felt it was, you know, decimating the corpse of a sacred site. Ryan Reynolds is aware of, like, that's a really good movie. Here, I'm going to rip it apart now, like, literally yeah. and figuratively. Let um, me be as disrespectful as humanly possible. You can't get <laughs> any more disrespectful than yeah. this, okay? He did it. He, he went there. He knew what he was doing. Um. I think from the moment we got to the uh, MCU in between place, once we got to nowhere or whatever, yeah. yeah, I think once we got to the void and <laughs> we started, it's not really weird, <laughs> not, but uh, you know what's funny, Taylor? Not cameo fest again. the The excitement I have for the Fantastic Four is because of what I saw in Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah. And they've now put in the Marvel audience. Oh yeah, Reed Richards is a, the most is one of the smartest men alive. 
they are like a wrestler giving hype to this thing that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Amazing. And then Taylor, it, it, the movie really delivered well. So I'm going to talk about uh, just for starters. Uh, so I, I was able to see the movie and I posted my review online and I gave it an eight uh, because I had some gripes, but I, I didn't not enough gripe other way, Michael. No, it, no, this is good for me. This, Taylor, is correct. This is the right score. It's not a perfect movie. You need to know uh, a general audience. I had to explain to the woman next to me who Henry Cavill was. She saw she she watched that and she goes, Who is that? And I and I turned to her. I I, I I turned to her in the movie. I said, "That's the old Superman." And she went, "Oh!" But like that did not jump out to her. That's it. That's yeah. a little too inside baseball for like normal moviegoers. Yeah. So my my uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the the humor was there. Uh, it definitely had some great jokes. There's a few times that I was legitimately laughing out loud, and I don't do that a lot in movies. I agree um, with you. Seeing it with a full audience, there was laugh out mode, uh, yeah. laugh out loud jokes in the movie. There was a lot of those funny jokes, um, but uh, like I said, my my biggest gripe was that they did feel like at some moments of the film were meant to be purposefully disrespectful to the pre Marvel, pre MCU Marvel content. Um, they had all the cameos, which are fantastic, but uh, one cameo in particular was done in a way that was pretty damn disrespectful, especially how they introduced him, and then they wiped him off the plate. I thought the, the but grotesque... Chris Evans, but, but Chris Evans wants... But that's he's okay right, with that. Right. But uh, also with the desecrating of the corpse of, of Wolverine, they it really felt like they were like, yeah, we're going to be on board with all these jokes as long as you make them the butt of the jokes. So it just felt like even if you had any sort of attachment to these previous movies they're trying to tell you that none of these movies are good enough because they're the MCU is better now. Yeah. So it was just like, uh, I, I firmly to this day argue that on a, as a whole, the Fox X-Men universe is mostly better than the MCU. <laughs> what did Deadpool say? He told Fox, suck it. I'm going to Di fuck you. I'm going to Disneyland. I'm selling yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was pretty funny. That was actually when I started laughing, when he grabbed the camera, shook it and headbutted it and shattered this. I was like, wow, that was, I was not expecting that. Um, <clears throat> but the, the overall death of certain characters of, of Johnny storm, um, eh, didn't really do well for me, but it's um, not really Johnny storm. It's just it's a, a Johnny storm. It's yeah. a Johnny storm. There's may it's a multiverse Taylor. There's but other Johnny storms. As out they there. went on to explain that all these other branching universes are being wiped out. So if you liked these other films, they're, they're gone. <laughs> like, that's it. They're dead. Um, that was why I was like, ah, I didn't really love that, but it wasn't enough to really gripe the movie for me. Uh, one big gripe that I did have, and this was my my gripe, and this is actually my son pointed this out as after we saw it. Um, I, I I had it on the top of my head too, but my sixteen year old son pointed it out as well, and it kind of like solidified it that this kid also noticed it. Um, Deadpool one was a fantastic film, but it was a very personal film between Wade trying to hunt on Francis. It was meant to be just. Who's the villain? A dude named Francis. That's it. Very small scale movie. Second movie, Cable's trying to kill this little New Zealander kid, and he's trying to stop him. Much bigger, much bigger stakes. Bigger stakes, but not as big as Cassandra Nova's trying to end the multiverse. Like this movie was like an Avengers level threat. Mm. And my son was like, Why is Deadpool now fighting world ending problems? Didn't he just try to kill his like ex boss in the last movie. Like it's just one of those things where like Marvel can't help themselves. The stakes have to be end of the universe stakes for every damn movie. Yeah. And it just felt a little old that they did it again. Um, well, it felt like TV shenanigans. It, yeah. it, it, it felt like, listen, I, the thing that Deadpool and Wolverine made me realize is really how bad all this other writing has been. Yeah. Because yeah. Ryan Reynolds looked at all the toys and like made a really fun movie that like works within the universe, but can also be its own side thing. And the fact that they didn't do that, the fact that Dr. Strange in the multiverse of Mandish really should have been called Dr. Strange visits three places. Like, yeah. and even that also has some version of this in it as well. Um, I, I think they can't help themselves, Taylor. I don't think I don't they know how to do. I mean, 
what do you think the uh, it makes me wonder what the threat of daredevil is going to be it's got to be big if they're bringing in punisher also what punisher do you think died in the wasteland do you think uh, it, which uh, thomas uh, jane. You, you think it was thomas jane he didn't make it it's probably thomas jane or it's probably um the other guy uh the pencil guy no uh yeah, the war zone where he kills the dudes with pencils. Oh yeah, I, I forgot about that scene. Um, <laughs> uh, what was his name? Ray. He was. He died. Ford Fisher. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson. Stevenson. Yeah. Um, who I actually thought um, the movie itself wasn't the best, but he had a great look for Punisher, and the action was pretty on point. But the movie itself was kind of. Eh. It's when they it's kind of a horror movie, right? Like he's the he's the boogeyman. He's Michael Myers. Yeah. So with yeah. this movie, um, I really thought that the visual uh the visuals of Cassandra Nova were a lot of fun. She was a fantastic addition to the universe. Um and Marvel, uh, also X-Men just has the best villains. They really do. And I just everything about her, like, even though I get one movie with her. All super fun and gross and intimate and weird. Yeah, she like was that, so putting good. Putting your hands inside their their heads and stuff, like really yeah. cool. Um, one thing that it, it just reaffirmed to me was exactly that was that um, the X Men has always been like the ultimate pull point for some of the best content, and it's it's funny because a lot of people, a lot of the I was talking to a, a uh, somebody on the Instagram about this and with Marvel as a whole, the younger generation generation Z or whatever they call themselves. Now the, the ones who use the silly words like, uh, uh, Riz and stuff like that. <laughs> they, um, they grew up with the MCU. So to them, Marvel's peak is like Iron Man and Captain America, but anyone before 2010, understands that those were the Marvel C-list characters. And the A-list was always Spider-Man and the X-Men. They were the top. And kudos to Marvel for making your weakest comic book characters into billion-dollar franchises. But now we're getting into the characters that are truly fascinating and weird and just so much more fun. So I'm thinking about, I'm really thinking about what you're saying right now. And I'm thinking about the movie that we got. And it's surprising that they didn't try to get Ben Affleck as Pretty sure they Daredevil. did. Pretty sure they did. I, I think he missed, I think he, I think they fucked up by not pushing that hard enough. Because I think the rub they gave to Fantastic Four was really good. Um, and I'm thinking about the scene where Wesley Snipes is like, I'm the only boy. And it's like, yeah, he There's only one of me. There's yeah. only one of me. And there's something to be said about that. Um I, I, I like to have the self-awareness of Ron Reynolds looking at the camera and being like, for now. Oh, uh, <laughs> that and I also love that line when right where Wesley Slime's like, I thought I'd never come back. And him as Ryan Reynolds was like, You were very mean to me. Like, that's <laughs> such a like, it's like, oh yeah, yeah that that movie exists. And then that other line where um, Electra was like, they were like, oh, and we've, uh, what happened? Uh, what did she say about Daredevil? It was like, oh, he's fine. He's, he's dead. Uh, he, he, they go, uh, he goes, well, Daredevil used to be here, but he died. And, and Deadpool goes, oh my God, is that, are, are you okay? Electra's like, oh yeah, I'm totally fine with that, which is like, <laughs> yeah, nice little jab at her ex husband. Taylor, when I think about this movie in, in certain sort of ways, it does feel like they just wanted to get. X-23 and Logan and just get access to them anytime she did so little and was so great. Yeah, she she was a very, like, you could argue that she's a very small character, but as a small character, she carried so much emotional weight to make Logan better. And that's what was so great about her. And I also loved when they went off in their, ex, their fighting team, she had her glasses and her whole outfit from Logan. Like that now, was just awesome. Now I said all that stuff about the team stuff. That gambit, unless you, that is to pay off you, Taylor. That is to pay off a person that is reading about these projects and they don't go anywhere. That's such an 
that's such deep knowledge of all of that. Do you think I, that spot should have gone to someone more recognizable? No, no because it was so perfect. Um, everyone knows, everyone who knows the X-Men knows that Gambit is, like you could probably argue that in terms of X-Men, Wolverine, Deadpool, and Gambit are like the top favorite among all the fans. And everyone who has any sort of understanding about the Fox-Marvel merger knows that the first thing that Marvel had unceremoniously murdered was the Gambit film. Mm. And including him was just so damn funny. I loved his ultra thick Cajun accent because they had so many good jokes off of how thick his accent was. Um, But the funny thing about it is this was actually supposed to be the costume he was getting for that film. Wow. And that was going to be the most comic accurate X-Men universe costume that they've ever done. And it was so funny. And well, just, it makes me it makes me know that they must have done a thousand drawings of that Wolverine costume because it's yeah. so good. And you know what's funny is I never once, Taylor, Taylor, I never once was like, oh, he's going to put the mask on. At this point in my movie right. career, right. I didn't want. I was like, that's never going to happen. And when it happened, oh boy, was it yeah spectacular uh, when the 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 deadpool core shows up and funny enough uh cowboy pool that's matthew mcconaughey yeah that is that is the secret cameo of this movie because every deadpool movie has a secret cameo uh deadpool 2 had matt damon and and uh oh my god i just forgot his name uh brad pitt there you go matt damon and brad pitt were in the second one Matthew McConaughey is Cowboy Pool right there. And then the fact that Baby Pool and Teen Pool are Ryan Reynolds' kids is, is just funny. His wife uh, was Lady Pool. His wife was Lady Pool. But the moment that they walked out to the Madonna song and you see him reach behind his head and pull on the mask, the audience collectively lost their shit so hard. Now, I also want to tell you. He was just like this. like Yeah. Yeah, he, he puts it on. Like, yes. he pulling on the internet, the, the internet and everyone. Just, oh my God, this is it. Uh, one, if that's not a hoodie yet, Disney needs to get on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, two, I'm going to let you know, Taylor. Straight up, though, it does look goofy. It, it, yeah. it's, it's crazy that, like, for all these years, everyone was like, you can't do it. And I get it. But I'm going to let you know, it does look a little silly. Now, the moment he started me, killing Deadpools, it didn't matter. The, to me, the, what looked silly about it wasn't the the, the, the thing. It was the eyes. Um, the, they they that, did the Deadpool eyes? It wasn't – not the Deadpool eyes that bothered me. It was the fact that they – his mask should have had more of a Batman element where he was kind of scowling more. Um, his eyes just looked too damn open. Yeah, why can't we have why can't we have his real eyes? No, because the, the white lenses are what we wanted. That's what we That's wanted. That's what you, you wanted. I wanted that's that what I wanted. That is what I everyone wanted, wanted. A little bit tighter. I wanted a little bit less but bulky. That scene, but, yeah. Yeah. And you know what's funny was they deliberately gave us classic Wolverine Logan poses. When he lunges at a Deadpool in the through the Honda Honda Odyssey. Or when I mean, he's running at him in the void and he's like going like Wolverine, like berserker running. And I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. Um, uh, I I finally felt like they were utilizing it. The only thing we didn't see him do was climb a wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know how to get up there. Bing, 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 bing. Like, that's the only feel, thing I feel yeah. like we didn't see. But uh, such is life. Uh, like I said, uh, the other... I, and I forgot about this before. This is my other little gripe. Uh, what I meant about disrespecting previous characters, the saber tooth fight was so. It felt like it was so wasted. He just ran up and popped his head off. It was, and was wasted, like, and it, it's wasted because of the caliber of those performers. We yeah. followed the Toad guy for five different movies. Why wasn't he given? Let him shine on screen. He's a really talented yeah. martial artist, and like, Corey, the fact him do that something. they actually got Ray Park to come back as Toad, just for him to like, for people not even to realize it's him. That was kind of a bummer. And Kelly Hugh comes back as Lady Deathstrike, and nobody realized it was actually her. 
No, and they couldn't get what's your name as Psylocke. I feel like that's why people stopped paying attention because they yeah, didn't get like because you didn't have Psylocke and you didn't have Vinnie Jones as Juggernaut. Nobody paid attention to the actual actors they got to come back. <laughs> so it's like I was like, all right, guys, I see what you did there, but um, I, I, I did it. I did really enjoy the uh, the Furiosa joke when he had Sabretooth's head. I was like, oh my god, okay, that was so well planned by Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I mean the the quips the the real the the so many of these movies it feels like the jokes we're getting is like the third take that they really thought was funny in the room. I can yeah. really feel how sharp these animantium uh, swords are because boy does this movie hit good. Like it just beat for beat. It's 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 a fun. They don't really slow down that much. I love that the I cut like we've been wanting to watch Deadpool and Wolverine fight forever and they fight in the Honda. Like I I I love that the way they play with those expectations. I wonder what other X-Men now get to come back. So from my understanding, and this was something that I heard from a few people now behind the scenes. Anna Paquin? No, no, no. What I'm saying is the fact that all of these people survived means oh. they're going to be utilized again. Okay. Um, I did like how at the end the you officially got Logan and Laura sitting together and like they're now part of the prime Deadpool universe. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but we also are probably going to see Channing Tatum back because the internet loved it and I'm pretty sure Marvel's listening and I'm like, hey, Channing, come back. <laughs> Do it one more time. I don't want gambit to be funny the way that they've done thor and they really were on that line they were on that line but it wasn't like it wasn't like thor funny because thor is like the two last two thor movies they were trying to make thor into like a weird tony stark parody okay um, cut to cut to 20 cut to 20 21 minutes ago taylor when i said i don't want to talk about it i want to talk about it what is this thor movie they're setting up because oh my God, I no, feel so like that, that joke was supposed to be something from Secret Wars where Deadpool sacrifices himself and Thor is like, no, but then he heals. <laughs> so, Okay, you don't think it's that they're going to do a Deadpool and Thor movie? Because I feel like Deadpool would be silly enough that Thor would then get to be serious again. And we could see him make that transition with the Joker character of Deadpool. I, I don't want that movie. Um, I thought the that scene was pretty great, but I feel like if they just show that scene at the beginning of Secret Wars, and then just like show that, like how you cold open the movie, and then just have Ryan Reynolds be like, "So that's how that happened." But let's go back to the beginning, and then just start the movie over. Just just pay that scene off right there. But um, again, you need to have Ryan Reynolds be allowed to be himself and give him the censor button so he can just beat bleep himself out. Make him self-aware and just be like, right at the beginning, be like, I was told that I can't use the F-bombs or these words, so I'm just going to censor myself. Have him talk to the audience while he does yeah. it. Um, and then just do the movie. Uh, I I do feel that they need to not... I don't think that... I think Deadpool humor works for Deadpool and they need to find another way to have him interact with everybody else. I yeah. don't think every movie should be fourth wall breaking now. I think if that's a very special thing that he gets to do. And I think only he should do it. I think he should just do it the one time to explain the rules and just be like, I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to break the fourth wall. So I'm sorry, everyone. I'm allowed to do this, but I'm just explaining what Feige told me and just move on. Mm. <clears throat> but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought the movie was fantastic. I know a lot of people, I, I've heard very mixed reviews. Either you loved it or you hated it. I, why are people hating this? It was super fun. It was a fun movie. Now, it does plug into all of the Disney Plus television shows they said you don't have to pay attention to. Nope, this whole movie was based on those. Yeah. So much so that uh, Ryan Reynolds tells the audience what episode of Loki to watch. Yeah. Oh, the TVA, like in Loki season one. <laughs> like season just, one episode five yeah um he that was pretty good uh that's what i like the fourth wall breaking is when he explains the backstory of what you need to know um that was pretty good to, for me but um 
I, a lot of people that I know that didn't like the movie all kind of complained about the same thing, said it was disrespectful to Logan. It was um, Fox was disrespectful to Logan. They had, no, they actually were pretty, they, they, they messed up on Logan one time. They did great every other time. They, they squandered that character. Okay. When they say he was the worst Logan, that's because he's our universe is Logan. It's our timeline. Okay. Uh, the I didn't think about Johnny Storm being disrespected like that. It's crazy that we're talking about disrespect, but I guess like Electra and Blade were not ripped apart and manhandled. Whom would you have accepted in that role? Who else? What other person would you have wanted to be unceremoniously ripped apart like that? You know, I in hindsight, like the the people that we got, I was fine that they were they were there and they they survived. I would have probably preferred another character that probably wasn't as favored. Like maybe the weird fantastic four movie. That was that one-off terrible one. Maybe have one of those characters get into like the ones that actually were not popular. Yeah. Use those characters as your cannon fodder. Make the joke about how they were, they were the mistakes of the MCU um, or the Marvel universe. But like a, a movie that was actually successful and actually has a fan base who were upset that we never got a third movie. Maybe don't murder them because that they're those people actually there are people out there that actually care about those incarnations. Mm. So that is the trilogy that never happened, was it? The Fantastic yeah. Four. We got the two, and two is definitely way bigger than one. But it was also sillier. That was the problem that a lot of people had with it was that it it went from a PG thirteen movie to literally Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer is PG. Yeah, it's a, it has no swearing in it, very little anything in it, and. Johnny Storm becomes a super scroll. And uh, was... if they would have ripped apart uh Michael B. Jordan, do you think he would have been okay with that if he got his skin ripped off? I think if they would have brought that version of the thing back or something, like something like, where's your pants? And then him just get dissolved in the sand. You know, like I don't know. They I don't Michael B. I Jordan think, probably would have said yes to it. <laughs> I think the moment they turned uh uh uh, Mr. Reed's into Spaghetti Man. I feel like once he ripped that person apart, everyone's fine with being killed in an MCU movie now. It's yeah. like a fun, it's like a badge of honor. Probably. I mean, like I said, it was not so much like the Johnny Storm stuff was a little gruesome, but it wasn't like, oh, that sucked. It was, I thought it was just more so like how they were acting toward every other character in general. Like it's just, I don't know. I liked the pre MCU Marvel stuff, and they were just so unceremoniously to all of it. It was they were clearly making them the butt of the jokes. Heard. Um, I like the movie. Mm -hmm. I think that the only reason why people are going to talk about what happened at Comic Con is because this movie is going to make them excited for that stuff. And I and think I, I think to your point, they could have maybe done Fantastic Four a little bit better because we're building them up right now. Yeah. I mean, this scene is probably how they now are justifying Tony Stark being Victor Von Doom. Yep, because hundred percent. He made the joke like, "Oh, Captain America," and it's like, "No, flame on!" And he's like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> but yeah, I loved it. I want more of it. I want them to not overuse Deadpool. I don't know what that looks like. I think it's. I hope I that hope they can build all of these. I hope they can work all of these pieces together. But is that not by is that not a legitimate concern? Because the moment that Marvel had Guardians of the Galaxy come out, they tried to copy that humor in every single movie since then. This yeah. movie is already breaking records. It is the number one rated R movie in the world of like all time, really. And I might go see it again. I would like I, to see. I would like to see it again, but like I don't know if I want to like go out of my way to see it. But I might go see it again. I actually have tickets to see it again tomorrow because my wife didn't go to go see it with us the first time. Hot so, dog! She's gonna love it. She didn't like the first two, but she loves Wolverine. She loves Hugh Jackman as Logan. So this is, I think but that Taylor, was my sell point. Doesn't this have a little bit of that MCU on it? Do you it know has, what I mean? It has a bit of it. I think the most MCU ness of the whole thing was the end sync intro. Sure. That just screamed MCU to me. That kind of like, we didn't need this, but here it is. Okay. <laughs> but I did enjoy uh, Wade Wilson humming the Marvel cinematic uh, theme song to the Marvel crawl. That was a nice little Easter egg. But um, I like when he pretended to be Spider Man. Yeah. Just the nice little fourth wall breaks. 
uh, when do we get Hugh Jackman Wolverine again? Well, we know he's coming back for Secret Wars, so. It didn't say at the end of the movie, Wolverine will return in the Secret Wars, though. No, nope, didn't say that for any of it, but apparently, uh, behind the scenes wise, one of the big sell points to get Hugh Jackman to agree to come back was that he wanted to do a scene with Tobey Maguire and Robert Downey Jr. And that was something that they explicitly agreed to, allegedly. Wow. Uh you can't kill Wolverine, so he's not going anywhere until you vaporize him and replace him with somebody else. Yeah. So okay. we'll see what happens. But we'll see what um, happens. I enjoyed the film. I thought it was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see where they go with it next. Like I said, my big concern is that they're going to uh, abuse the Deadpool humor going forward. But let's see what happens. See what happens. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, I have been your host, Taylor Murphy, and my co-host, as always, Michael Santel. If you like what we do, head over to the patreon.com slash the cultured nerd. Help us keep the lights on. Help us keep afloat. Uh, if you're sitting at home watching this on your screen, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you liked or didn't like about Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, scan that QR code. Head over to our socials. Let us know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on the socials. And we will see you all next time.